So today I'm going to do a little kind of impromptu talk about about Salon demoing, um, you know, really really demoing, you know, some of the, um, you know, the features of language just by by playing around in Eclipse a bit. Um, <clears throat> so I need to I've learned I need to start with um, with a couple of bits of information about it. So first of all, um, you know, um, one of the you know things I want to say, you know, I'm talking about a different you know programming language at a at a language at a at a conference where there's you know I know a lot of a lot of guys are yeah you know, where, where the subject is Java so what's up with that well you know I want to say that you know um, one thing that's very important about what we're doing here is that we're we're big fans of Java and you know everything we're doing here we're doing as you know people who are fans of Java and and everything it's brought to the community um, <clears throat> so I need to you know I've learned I need to start with this disclaimer if I seem you know, in what I say in this presentation, to criticize Java or, or any other programming language, um, that's because we care. We're not bashing anything. We're not trying to be negative about anything else. It's because, you know, sometimes I like to draw out distinctions between um, approaches taken in different, in different languages to, to justify and explain why, you know, maybe Salon does something differently. Um, <clears throat> So what's Salon about? Well, we kind of boiled it down into, a, you know, my, um, my colleague Emmanuel Bernard says that, you know, apparently you have to boil everything down into three. Um, apparently that's the fashion. So, so what's Salon about? Um, you know, we said there's, you know, there's three things that, you know, we think are, you know, kind of distinguishing values. Salon is powerful, by which we mean something specific. Um, it's powerful in the sense that the language is expressive, more expressive than some other languages, and it's powerful in the sense that the compiler um, can catch a lot more bugs, excuse me, or potential bugs than, than what you will catch in some other languages. Um, it's readable. Readability is one of our core values. What that means is that um, <clears throat> somebody who comes into a project, you know, that, that it's a project for, for large teams, you know, um, building large programs, that somebody can come in and look at a piece of Salon code and understand more or less what it does. And if I take a, a bit of code written in the language and paste it in my blog, then people who are not Salon programmers should be able to, you know, more or less get the gist of what's going on in it. Um, it's predictable. What that means is that... Um, kind of a wishy-washy word perhaps, what that means is something very specific, that the reasoning that the compiler uses to reason about the language, to reason about the type system, should always be something that is um, reproducible to the developer. For example, the, comp the compiler should never produce error messages, error messages that are, um, you know, kind of difficult to understand or don't identify the, the real root cause of the problem, you know. And, and this, you know, to be able to produce... Um, um, you know, good error messages, you actually need some very specific technical um, property, quality, properties of language. One, one example is you need that all types that the compiler uses to reason, about, reason internally be denotable. That is, you can write them down in the, in the language itself. This is not true for Java. It's not true for some of the languages with static typing. Salon is not just a programming language. Salon is a platform with modularity and with tooling. So it's a platform because what we're not doing here in this project is we're not trying to build a different programming language for working with, you know, the existing SDK of, say, the JVM. Um, Salon is its, is, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a um, has its own, well, or will have its own SDK um, um, that's designed for, that, that's designed to allow your code to be written and targeted towards either the JVM or a JavaScript virtual machine. Um, a critical thing if you're building a program for, that, that should execute on the client on a, on a JavaScript, um, on a JavaScript runtime, an absolutely key um, <coughs> thing that the language has to have is modularity. So, so Salon has a very, very, very tiny language module and um, other parts of the SDK are modules that, um, that, that, that you use you know, on top of that language module. Um, so modularity is one of the absolutely core, you know, in this world of, you know, mobile and cloud, modularity is an absolutely key and critical thing, and therefore Salon has modularity built right throughout the entire, you know, environment and, and ecosystem, right from the start. Um, 
and you know, finally, um, you know, for me, one of the most critical things is, you know, to me, the whole purpose of static typing is to enable um, tooling. You know, um, at least, at least in the, you know, in this day and age, you know, I know that originally people, you know, talked about static typing to enable, you know, better performance, but that's no longer you know, really a key, you know, something of key importance. What's important about static typing is it enables you to write tools that can understand the semantics of your code, do, re you know, do refactoring and, 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 and things like this. Um, <clears throat> and, so, and so, of course, you don't write a, static, a statically typed language these days unless, unless your goal is to write, you know, is to write some, fantastic, um, some fantastic tools. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so, uh, let me start out with a, with a brief status report of where we are because I always get to the end of my talk and then people ask, well, you know, what's the, you know, where are you at? Um, so the language specification has been pretty stable for, a, you know, for quite a long time now, um, though um, there's some language cha changes coming in M5 which, um, which need to be reflected in the spec. Um, we can already compile and run 95% of the language on, on, both, um, on both platforms. Um, you know, the, the M4 release went out a couple of weeks ago, um, and the very next milestone release, we originally planned out five milestone releases, um, the very next ri milestone release will be the feature complete um, implementation of, of the whole, you know, 1.0 language, and, and so we'll call that, you know, so M5 will be simultaneously branded a beta. Um, the first platform modules, or at least, you know, kind of alpha versions of them, um, so the first modules that form part of the SDK are already available in the community module repository, which is called Salon Herd. All right. So let's do something. So let's do something more interesting than slides. So um, when you first install, so what I have here is, is Eclipse, and, and when you first, in, uh, you know, and I installed the, the Salon plugin from um, our Eclipse update site, and, you know, this is what you're going to see when you first Install the plugin. Um, so let's, um, you know, just get started with something silly and, you know, write a, write an application which prints hello. So we'll call, um, you know, so we'll create a salon project. This will take me to the, um, the salon perspective in my IDE. And, um, you know, I'm going to need a source file. Um, we'll call it hello, of course. Um, I get to fill in my. Um, um, some top-level method there, and um, you know, hello DevOps, um, and we'll run that on the JVM backend, and it prints hello DevOps. Wow, you know, amazing. Um, we also um, enable um, compilation to to JavaScript, and um, just so happens that. Um, I have um, that I have Node installed on this machine, so um, the, the the plugin automatically, you know, discovers where Node is, and um, um, and then I can run it as a as a JavaScript application on Node. So so we just ran that program on both on both the JavaScript VM and on um, and on the Java VM. So the Salon compiler, which is running under the covers here in within the IDE never produces like dot, dot class files in a directory. What it produces is it either produces a car archive, which is a, which is a module which can be deployed to the Salon module runtime on top of the JVM. So it's like a, you know, it's like a jar with some extra metadata that describes um, how it relates, its dependencies to other modules. Um, and, um, and it produces a JavaScript file which is um, which is uh, which complies with a, a, a common JS if you know what common JS module, um, which you can then use um, using you know require JS or whatever you know JavaScript um, common JS um, stuff you have. Um, let me let me demo a couple little things which we always demo and, and perhaps you've seen it before, but um, you know it's worth. Th there's a um, in the in the language module there's a there's an object called process. Um, and it has some command line arguments, right? So, um, yeah, that's the first one. And let's, um, you know, call it that, all right? So, so let's try to print out the, um, you know, the, the first arg here, right? Um, and, um, and look at that, they didn't quite compile. 
So what's the, what's the error message there? Interpolated expression must be assignable to object. String question mark is not an object. So there's a bit of syntax sugar that's going on there that's perhaps making, you know, this, this a little bit, um, this a little bit um, harder for, for someone who hasn't looked at Salon before to, to look at. So this, so this, if we hover over arg, we see that it's of type string question mark. What the, well, what the hell does that mean? Well, let me um, um, elaborate what that means. That's just a, a very trivial piece of syntax sugar. You, you see, if I, um, if I try to assign process arguments first directly to string, that doesn't, that doesn't compile. What, what this question mark thing is telling me is that, is that um, the type over here is, a, is, is potentially null. It's an optional type, right? So, so what it really means within Salon's type system, what that question mark means, is it's just, a, it's, it's just an abbreviation for string or nothing. So this type nothing, if we have a look at it, um, it's, just, you know, it's just the type of the null value. It has, you know, nothing has one value here, this object null. So, so you can see how, you know, within Salon's type system, you know, null isn't a primitive value that's an instance of the bottom type like it is in Java. In, in Salon, everything is a is represented within the type system. There's no primitive or, 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 or compound types which can't be expressed as classes or, you know, within the language itself. Right, so null is just an, just an object. Um, so, so when we say something string or nothing, what we're saying is well, I might have a string or I might have null. Why? Well, because I might not have specified any arguments to the, um, to the program. So, well, this is not very, you know, this is kind of not very useful. So what the hell could I, you know, could I do with this, with this arg thing? Well, there's a, you know, there's, a nice, um, there's a nice construct in Salon which says if exists arg, and, um, and now if I uh, move that in there, inside the block there, now all of a sudden this passes the type checker. So if we, um, we run it, well, it doesn't print anything because I didn't specify any command line arguments, so let's, um, Let's um, do it in the only way I can possibly do it in Eclipse, which is really quite ugly. Um, where, where is on Java application over here? Arguments, um, DevOx, and um, now we'll run it and it prints hello DevOx. Right. So, so. What does this exist thing really mean? You know, when you first see examples of Salon, you think, wow, Salon has a lot of, you know, these, these special case built-in features. And in fact, they're just actually, you know, syntax sugar. So what this actually means is, if is object. And so, and same, same behavior. Mm. Same behavior. So, um, let's have a look. When we look at this, this elaborated form, you know, obviously what we, you know, what we would normally write here is, you know, string question mark or value, and we'd normally write exists here. Let's look at let's look at what the type this thing has. It has type string. So I said if arg is an object, so how does when I have something that's string or nothing, and then I narrow it to type object, how does it turn out to be string? Well, what you're seeing here is, is you know, a really simple example of how union in intersection types work. So what this really means here is string or nothing, and object. Now, we can apply the distributive rule for, for uh, of, uh, you know, and say that, you know, um, um, intersection, uh, intersection distributes over, over union, and so we have string an object or nothing an object. Now, nothing an object. If you ha if you if we go up and, and look at the uh, the definition over here, this is the this is the abstract supertype of all types in Salon. It's called void, um, and, and and it says that any value in Salon is either an object or it's a nothing, or it's nothing, i.e., it's null. All right, so everything is either object or nothing. And these are disjoint, but these are classes, so they're disjoint types. So over here, nothing and object are disjoint. So, they're, so that's, that's nothing. That's an empty type. It's equivalent to, it's really the type bottom. So we can remove this from it. And now I have string and object. Well, string is a subtype of object. Look over here at string, it extends object. 
So this is in fact just string. So you can see how all this reasoning about union and intersections is stuff that the Salon compiler does automatically. Um, and this is quite, you know, I don't want to say unique, but it's, it's, a, um, it's, a different, it's a very different and characteristic thing. So when we write this stuff, we're making use of union intersection types. Let's just quickly see another um, quick example of, um, of how union intersection types help us. So um, let's make a, uh, a sequence of strings. Um, and let me make that warning go away. That's really annoying. So, even though we never specified what type of sequence we were creating, the compiler is able to infer that we're creating a sequence of strings. So you probably think that's not, that's not very amazing, and frankly, in this case, it's not very amazing. It's able to look at the, the thing called type argument infer inference. So it's able to look at the, at the parameters, the, excuse me, the arguments that is being passed to this, um, this syntactic construct and, and, and figure out that we're creating a, we're creating a list of, um, a sequence of strings. All right. One reason why this is really a problematic construct in a lot of languages is that what would the type of this thing be? Does anybody know what the type of strings there should be? Sequence of... Right, everybody's asleep. It's a sequence of string, integer, or float. That is to say, each element of this sequence is a string, an integer, or a float. Which is exactly what I bet you were thinking in your head, but you've been trained by programming languages which can't do this kind of reasoning to go looking for other answers like, oh, the most the most specific common supertype of all these things. No, I mean we don't need to do that because string or integer because sequence is a um, is a covariant type. Um, I can say um, you know I can say. this, and that's, and that's well typed, right? So because string, integer, and float are all objects, I can pass a sequence of string, integer, or float to, um, you know, to something that, exe that expects a sequence of objects. All right. So that's the first thing I wanted to tell you guys about. Um, now let's um, go and start making use of, let's go write a, a silly little module. Um, so I've created a I've created a module here, which means that you know something that has a um, a, a module descriptor, um, and uh, and um, and in the module descriptor I'm going to um, um, import um, import our um, I need to turn off JavaScript compilation if I want to use the file module. Because the file module does not run on the JavaScript backend. And um So the file, the file module has an object called home, which is my home directory. Um, and um, I'm going to If that's, a, if that's a directory, it's the path of the, this is a, this is a path. 
excuse me, this is a path. Um, Um, try that. So, you get to see a little bit of the syntax of Salon, where, um, and, and specifically we, we're making use of a thing called um, enumerated types. So, resource um, is an enumeration of directory or file or, um, or, or link. Um, so, One of the things you can do when you have a resource is you can is you is you can is you can switch on it and 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 precisely handle the cases. Um, <clears throat> Let's do something else. Let's, let's show you a, a better example of enumerated type. So what I'm going to do here is in, in Salon M4, there's no support for tuple types. In Salon M5, we just, we just got done implementing support for tuples. But, but since they're not in M4, let's see how you could... Um, let, let, let's see how you could implement tuples um, without having the built-in language level support for it. Um, so I'm going to um, I'm going to show you a, 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 a you know a representation of tuple types. What, what's a tuple type? A tuple type is a typed um, is a typed sequence of values, right? So you know when we know the type of each, we, we have a specific type for each element. So it's different to a list when I have a when I have a list or a sequence or whatever. I say you know I have a list of strings, right? In a tuple, I can say I have a list where the first element is a string, the second element is a um, is a um, an, an integer, the third element is a float, whatever. So it's actually quite an interesting problem to try and enc encode this into the type system because you generally you know have a type that's parameterized by multiple types. Um, so the way we can represent this in Salon is using a recursive definition of tuple. So what we're going to start off with is, is consider the case of the empty tuple. I'm going to, I'm going to create, I'm going to create like a, a marker interface. Um, I'm going to call it you know, tuple-ish, whatever. So we can have a, let's make this an object, why not? No, that's not. So, so an empty tuple, well, what does it have? Well, not really anything, you know, it's, it's pretty, you can't really do much in, anything with, a, with an empty tuple. And then we'll have a, um, a non-empty tuple, um, which is going to have, um, which is going to have a, well, this is going to be parameterized by two things. It's going to be parameterized by the type of the first element and the type of the rest of the tuple. This is going to be a recursive definition. So I'm going to have first, first, rest, rest. Um, Type 
that more easily. Um, and um, we're going to make, we need to make this guy up here an enumerated type of Don't do that. Yeah, let's do that. So we're saying that what we're saying here is that any tuplish is either an empty or a tuple. Um, Let's try this and see how far I get. And we want to, one thing we want to specify here, we don't want to go accepting any old thing for um, 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 for rest. Rest has to be a um, Another another tuplish. All right, so let's see how far we get here. I might be missing something, but um, but let's try. So let's create a tuple of, you know, a string and a integer. It's a recursive definition, so. Um, so it's got a first, and then to access the second element, we can go tuple rest first, and then let's look at the look at the types of these things, right? So first is string, and second is integer. So the compiler was able to reason, even though I haven't specified any kinds of types anywhere here, even though I'm creating a const, I'm creating a, um, you know, this is a const list, right? I mean, I'm calling it tuple, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a const list. So, you know, if I, um, I don't know, put a, put a float in here, I create a longer tuple. You know, now, now first is, is float, second is a string, and... Um, rest and third will be a uh, integer okay. what about if we try to access the fourth element of this tuple oops we can. It's a compile error because empty doesn't have um, doesn't have um, a uh, an element. A, a, a doesn't have a first. So you can see how we're we're weaving together a, a number of things here. But essentially, essentially, you can see the power of the of the type inference um, in Salon to correctly you know, assign types to all these things, even though we never actually mention any types in the code. So what is the type of this thing actually? Well, it's, it's horrible, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a really long expression like that. So, so you know, this shows the need for um, some, syntax, some extra syntax sugar. And so in Salon M5, we have tuples which are, which are a bit cooler than this, which are a lot cooler than this, actually. And, and, the, and we introduce some syntax sugar so that you don't actually see types that are that complex and difficult to read. Um, all right, let's, let's do something for the fun of it. Let's, um, let's make, um, let's, um, let's make tuples. Um, um, let's implement element-wise addition for, um, for tuples. Oh. 
Sorry. All right, now I'm going to need to implement what, what plus means. This, you know, this interface summable declares a method called plus, which, which defines what, you know, how to add two things together. So, um, um, well, let's, we, really should, um, we sh really should handle the, uh, um, the empty case first. It'll be easier. So we can add empties with empties and... Um, You know, that just returns, this should be fine, right? Um, then over here, um, what's, what's, what's a correct implementation of plus going to look like? Well, we're going to create another, another tuple, and it's going to be first plus other dot first. And it's going to be rest plus other dot rest, recursive definition. This didn't compile. Why? Oh, first is not a subtype of summable. So, so I'm gonna. I need to add a type constraint. Um, and it still didn't work. An expression must be a numeric type. Rest is not a subtype of summable. Of course. Okay. Let's get rid of this to make it a little bit easier. And um, and now um, let's uh, try to add a couple of tuples together. Let's let's make a let's make another tuple up here. I don't know. And um, let's just print that. Oh, yeah, we need a string. <coughs> Missed that one. We'll um, use that to represent empty. Over here, we're going to say it's going to be plus first string plus rest of, we want to eliminate the first paren, plus we're going to want a comma in here. And we added two tuples together. So this approach to overloading that we have in Salon, where we don't let you, um, sorry, well, we don't let you kind of um, um, arbitrarily define, make plus mean whatever the hell you damn well please, whatever the hell you want plus to mean. Plus in Salon has specific semantics associated with it, which are captured by this, um, by this interface summable. Um, so it's an approach to offer operator overloading, which lets you do things like define your own complex class with, with addition and numeric operations, but without, um, with, without letting people, you know, and frameworks go to, the, go to the, you know, the crazy extent of defining all kinds of unnatural symbols and, and using them to mean, to mean whatever they mean. So we call this operator polymorphism. 
um, because it's, re it's related to the natural polymorphism of inheritance and interfaces, it's not overloading. In fact, Salon has no kind of overloading at all. Um, <clears throat> all right. There's something else I was going to do here. So you can see how we've done something that you know that you, that you simply can't do in a lot of languages. Define, you know, come up with a with a nice, clean, recursive definition of tuples, which um, which gives you all the right types back. Now all we need to, you know, now all we need to do is the language needs to do is layer a bit of syntax sugar over the top of it. How should I do it here before we go to questions? Um, 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 um. Let's show how we can use Salon to build a a really kind of simple, silly kind of a um, kind of a um, DSL for 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 defining tables. So you know what? Let's do it in a module. So you know we're going to want a class to represent a cell of the table, and I don't know. I guess it can have a uh, um, Probably going to want a string of this eventually, but let's let, let's let's see how far we get without doing that, without going that far. Um, we're going to a row. How are we going to? Um, we're going to print out a row. I guess we'll print the cells. Um, we're going to use join of string. Good. And we're going to print tables. Something kind of similar. Um, we use new line to join them, I guess. Or all right. Let's try this. Um, so you know we could we could use a, a, a you know like a really dumb way to create um, a really kind of typical way to create um, 
Really hard to come up with a good example. All right, so, well, that's a really, really, really terrible way to print out a table. But given the time left to me, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do the thing to center them and all that. Um, what I'm going to do instead is show you how to make this look a little bit better and nicer and more declarative using, um, well, let's 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 add something else to the table. Let's just, you know, you can probably get a feel for it. So, so we'll give um, tables a title. Um, So now let's um, use a named argument list representation of this. Not quite right. It's not quite right. So Just, just to convince you guys this stuff still runs. So you can see how what we've done here is we've started to build up a little language that naturally, um, that looks a little bit like, um, that's not right, like something we could use to define a user interface. It looks like a bit like XML or any kind of structured hierarchical, um, you know, language for defining a, a user interface. But of course, this is within our you know, within our, our ordinary programming language, and we have all the, you know, the normal tooling that we have, you know, in Salon IDE to help us write and, and, and create these things. Um, indeed, we could even, um, you know, let you, um, you know, create a, um, a callback function here. Um, um, we don't need to get an event. Um, uh, 
And, um, you know, if you click here, um, So we can even insert, embed, start embedding bits of code in here, right? So this is, a, this is a function that's being passed to um, the parameter on click of the constructor of cell. So what we intend to use this for is to provide, you know, very nice APIs for building, for building user interfaces. You can imagine using a language like this to generate um, a, a piece of DOM, running it on the, on the, on the, on the client side and, and, and having you know, a nice interactive uh, user interface um, that's actually, you know, a, uh, you know, JavaScript HTML user interface that's actually written in, in Salon. Okay, so I think we've got some time for, for questions. Everybody has some. Yes. Yes. When I'm creating the tuple? So if I were to try and let's um So if I were to try to add together um, two tuples that are of different types, this suddenly becomes, is no longer well typed, right? So other tuple, so if we see, you know, so first of tuple is a float, First, first of other tuple is an integer. And therefore, this is no longer well typed. Right? So it's, you know, it propagates all that information and, and you know, that you would expect to be able to maintain, you know, that, that, that only tuples of the, of the same type, are of, of the right type are used where, where you want them to be used. Um. That answer the question? I have a question. Yes. Yes. Uh, can you make use of uh, Java libraries from within your project? The question is, when we're running on the JVM, can we use Java libraries? Absolutely. Um, and I'll show you how. First of all, who here knows the, um, the, um, um, the jigsaw modularization of the, Java, of the JVM? Um, has anybody looked at it? Anyway, the point is that the... Um, you know, the, here's the, the, the Java namespace will give you access to, the, to Jigsaw's modularization of the Java SDK. So I can import Java base here, and I can start... Which module was this in? I'm in, I'm in tables, okay. Uh, so, so over here I can say... Um, 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 what's the JDK class you want to use? Hash set. You know, um, hash set of DR5, I don't know, what? Um, now I can Because 
I don't have any arguments here. I need to explicitly specify the type of the type argument. And, you know, I'm using, you know, hash just, just the way you would naturally use it in Java, but it's actually somewhat more convenient because, you know, Salon syntax is, some, is, is quite a lot less verbose than Java's. Um, so, yeah, you can, you can absolutely make use of all the, of all the Java uh, other libraries. And, um. Other questions? This particular one, we will probably introduce a, an interface called Scalable to allow that particular case. Because there's quite a few things where you would exactly, you know, vectors or matrices are, are the exact case where you would like to be able to multiply a scalar by a... Um, yeah, the, it has to be built into the la you know, these, 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 these operators have to be operators that are built into the language and have well-defined semantics within the language. Um, and then and then you can do it. You can't define equals colon equals to mean something, right? Because because it just doesn't make your code easier to understand. Right. You know? yeah. Any more questions? I think I'm just four minutes left. Nobody. All right. Yes. The, 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 syntax, the syntax we're using in, obviously I didn't, I didn't demonstrate here um, the stuff that's coming in M5 for our real tuple support, which is, which is nice. The syntax we're using is um, square braces, zero, one, two, which is the same operator we use for pulling. It turns out that in, that in Salon M5, tuples are actually sequences, are actually kind of sequence, right? So they're, so they're a kind of list. Um, and, um, and so we use the same operator we use for indexing in a list, with tuples, but there's some extra logic in the type checker to give you back the, if it, if it sees it's a tuple, it'll, it'll give you back the right type. Yeah. But it's just, again, it's just, syntax, it's just pure syntax sugar. The actual representation within, the, within everything, within the type checker of what a tuple type is, is exactly, is pretty much the one I showed you right there. Yeah. Um. One more in two minutes. Yes. Um, so it took us about, you know, we spent, I would say, you know, two years just researching and thinking and, and, and writing a specification, right? Um, and then the actual implementation has taken a year, I guess. Um, so, you know, we're obviously we're not working from scratch, you know, we're reusing, you know, the um, OWL compiler is a, you know, for the, for, is a, you know, we wrote the type checker and, the, and, and all this stuff, but then we, um, we transform our AST into a Java C AST to generate the bytecode. So we use Java C as like the world's most sophisticated advanced bytecode generation library. You know, likewise, we didn't have to build all of Eclipse. We just built a, a plugin for Eclipse. You know, so we're, we're working with, um, you know, a lot of mature, you know, likewise with the SDK, a lot of our SDK will be wrappers for pre-existing, you know, open source libraries. Right? Or, or even stuff available on the SDK. For example, salon.file, I didn't implement salon.file from scratch. It's just a wrapper around Java 7's nio.file stuff. Um, so, so we're working with a lot of underlying infrastructure that's very, ma that's very mature. That's, you know, that's the great thing about the Java, the Java ecosystem, right? Um, No, this is you know this will be this will be something Red Hat offers to um, to you guys as you know the foundation for our you know mobile cloud you know for building applications for 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 the client for um, for, for for cloud um, and so this is you know this is why modularity is such a big deal. 
Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate your coming.